Now here's the part of the show where we feel bad about ourselves. They are some of the smartest and brightest high school students from around the country. And the finalists in this year's Intel Science Talent Search were here in Washington this week. Nearly 1,800 students submitted their experiments and discoveries, but only one, only one gets the prize of $150,000. I sat down with this year's winner, Andrew Jin, who taught me calling him, well, he thought I was calling him the smartest high school student in the country, and he didn't think it was a, exactly a, a very fair assessment. Well, I mean, I guess I was recognized for my research, but. I know there's just so many more brilliant people out there, and I had an amazing time this week, at least, just uh, meeting all these great 40 other scientists who are just equally passionate, equally motivated about science as I am, and I had an amazing time just bonding with them and forging these lifelong connections, and I just learned, I know at least, I learned a ton from them. So, help us, you designed adaptive mutations well, with I d DNA, Yeah, I designed right? an approach to try to search for these adaptive mutations in full genome DNA sequences. What, what gave you the inspiration to even go down that room? That's just not something that a normal high school student is going to want to do on its, uh, in his or her spare time, I imagine. Yes, so this kind of started uh, back, at least when I was from a very young age. In middle school, I learned about natural selection and evolution. And I just felt that Darwinian evolution was such an elegant and unifying concept. And we know so much about the theory, but really, we have no idea about what happens in real life, like what mutations, what traits, or like what exactly, what, exactly what traits, I mean mutations, enable us to do algebra or speak languages or be uniquely human. So after taking the evolution unit in biology class in 11th grade, I decided that I really wanted to do a research project over the summer by myself to investigate this and pursue this path of research. And I applied to a summer program at MIT called the Research Science Institute program, where I kind of conveyed my passion for researching evolution genetics, and I also conveyed my passion for the computer science part, where I was using machine learning and artificial intelligence, and I got assigned to an amazing and perfect lab, where I got to kind of combine both. I, I, I'm so happy that I don't have to compete with you in any of your classes. <laughs> um, so now what? You won $150,000. First of all, what are you going to do with the money? Uh, I think the money is definitely going to go to my college education. And which, co which college are you going to go to? Um, Do you have a list? I mean, you're a senior, so this is the time of year that for those watching around the world, this is a time where you should be very close to getting your acceptance letters, right? Yes. Yeah, so I think the acceptance letters should all start rolling out within the next like month or so. so Do they know about this competition? I'm pretty sure they You should have waited and said, hey, look, by the way, I'd like to add an addendum, addendum to my application. I, I've won the <laughs> science competition. Yeah, I think I can definitely try to update them. A lot of people say that science in America is on the decline, that people don't focus enough on science, there's enough emphasis on science, and a lot of these um, engineering degrees, science-related degrees are going to a lot of, you know, the foreign, a lot of foreign countries get a lot of attention on that, and the U.S. ranks very low when you talk about the global scale. What do you tell kids who might be interested in science, and why should they be excited about science in America? I would just tell them to just go out there and do hands-on work to discover things. So I guess I started, like, no matter how simple something might seem, just go out and do it to explore. So I started research in eighth grade, and I did a very, very simple project where I was sort of investigating whether or not different bacteria would, from like household sinks would be resistant to soaps. And like, I mean, the discoveries and knowledge you gain from that is seemingly very small and trivial, but the feeling you get is amazing, like when you discover something that no one's ever known before. And that kind of, uh, kind of pushed me and motivated me to continue pursuing that same sort of discovery and same sort of scientific inquiry over the next uh, three to four years in high school. So definitely tell them to always like constantly observe the natural world, um, constantly ask questions about what's happening, and just keep up to date with the current science research. And you never know when you might get your next big idea for your next big science project.